Hello, so now we are going to solve hydrogen atom. Hydrogen atom is actually an interesting system because it is a completely solvable problem which is very rare in a quantum mechanics. Although there are in other model systems exist like particle in a box or the harmonic oscillator, but this is the only chemical system which has, which has chemical properties which is also exactly solvable. And the way the hydrogen atom is going to help us for the cases where we cannot solve it exactly, how should the solutions looks like? That is what we can get from the solutions of the hydrogen atom. So, we know that the hydrogen atom solution for the Schrodinger equation starts up with by separating the problem into two problem, whereas there is a center of mass which is moving freely which is a free particle and there is a relative mass motion where the electron is moving with respect to the nucleus. Now, the electronic structure, spatial distribution of electrons around the nucleus and the relative motion and the change in energy of the electron with the spatial location relative to the nucleus. There are two problems, the first one is a free particle and the second problem is actually what is quantized. Now how to solve it? We are going to solve it in spherical polar coordinate uh, like the coordinate how the arc look like. So we are going to use this transformation x, y and z and if we do the mathematics you can find out in any of the standard quantum chemistry textbook. We will lead to this complex looking equation which looks complicated operator, but it can be simplified very easily to get three separate Schrodinger equation. The first one is for phi, when we solve it we will get magnetic quantum number. Second one contains the theta, if I solve it I what I will get theta I will get the azimuthal quantum number and the third one contains the R if I solve it I will get the principal quantum number. So, for the three quantum numbers are necessary to describe a 3D system completely. But how it is different from the other 3D system particle in a three dimensional box is that this n, l and m are related to each other. So, where n is the principal quantum number specify the energy level of electrons in the hydrogen atom, l is the orbital angular momentum quantum number specify the magnitude of electrons orbital angular momentum in hydrogen atom, mz component of angular momentum quantum number specify the orientation or the direction of electrons orbital angular momentum in the hydrogen atom. Now there is a fourth quantum number spin that is spin angular momentum quantum number specify the orientation of electrons spin angular momentum. Now remember when we talk of spin, spin does not mean it is rotating like this or rotating like this, spin is a quantum mechanical phenomena and in a non-relativistic picture the Hamiltonian does not contain itself the spin, spin what comes due to the relativistic treatment of the electron. So here we just take as a spin as a quantum number, we are going to see more details about the spin in the following lectures where we know what is the properties of the spin and how it changes the wave function. Now, when we solve the hydrogen atom, what we get is orbitals. So, these are the hydrogen atom energy levels 1s, 2s, 2pz, 2p, xy and 3s, 3p it will go on. First thing is that because my operator is a linear Hermitian operator, this gives me a complete set. And because it is a complete set, we are going to use this one to solve my quantum mechanical problems numerically. So, this is what is going to construct will be my basis. Now, how the hydrogen 1s orbital looks like? This is the actual the form. You do not need to remember the form. You are not supposed to memorize it. You can find out from any textbook or from the internet. What is important to know is the form of this web function. So, as you can see, this is exponential minus r. And this kind of functions are called slater type of function. So, when we are going to solve numerically, Hattrefock will lead to basis set and that is where we will see that our basis set needs to be Slater type functions because my hydrogen atom orbitals are Slater type orbitals. Now, for 2s, this will be the form 2p x, 2pz and 2p xy. Remember, 2p xy does not have an well defined m values because they are complex. So, what we do is that because they are complex and they are degenerate, so I can take a linear combination. From the hydrogen atom solution what you will get is p plus and p minus, we take 
linear combination the plus combination will give you 2 p x and the minus combination will give you 2 p y which are real orbitals. Now we have shown that the orbitals are mathematical wave functions. Now in the if you look in one of the chemistry textbook this is what you will see as orbitals. Now the question is that what is an orbital? The precise definition of orbital is that it is a one electron wave function nothing more than that. But the picture what is given is not actually an orbital what is these are actually constant probability surfaces. So, these surfaces denotes probability of finding the electron up to a certain value that is why many of the textbook gives the definition that orbital is actually the space where finding out the electron probability is maximum that is not a correct definition. But this definition is consistent with the picture because these are actually constant probability surfaces. So, from hydrogen atom now we go to multi electronic atom more than one electron and cannot be solved exactly if we can but we can assume the same symmetry as the hydrogen atom. Now the simplest example will be helium atom. So, helium atom will have one nucleus and two electron. So, if I if I describe its Hamiltonian first of all it will have the kinetic energy of the electron kinetic energy of electron 1 kinetic energy of the electron 2 and the kinetic energy of the nucleus. There are potential terms that is attraction between the nucleus and electron 1 this one and the attraction between the nucleus and the electron 2 as well as there is an electron electron repulsion. So, in total if we count there are total 6 terms. Now, if I rewrite the terms a little bit I can separate out the kinetic energy and potential energy term. So, the left hand side the green one is my kinetic energy this is the electron nuclear attraction and these are the electron electron repulsion. So, that means I can write the Schrodinger equation especially the Hamiltonian as a combination of two one electron Hamiltonian plus one R 1 2 term and this R 1 2 of course, everything is written in the atomic unit for convenience. So, all the constant are set to 1. Now, the same picture I can take to multi electronic atom this is what we define for helium but if we go to multi electronic atom I can write it in the same way I can write as a sum of kinetic energy plus electron nuclear attraction plus pair wise repulsion of the electrons. Now, if I write it in this picture the hydrogen H i is one electron hydrogenic Hamiltonian for each particle H i is one electronic hydrogenic Hamiltonian for each particle. So, basically I can write the full Hamiltonian as a sum of the hydrogenic Hamiltonian and 1 by R i j term. Now, the problem with this 1 by R i j term is that it is not separable. So, I cannot write the R i j as a additive to values. So, I cannot write is 1 by R i plus 1 by R i j and because the Hamiltonian because I cannot separate these two variable. Hamiltonian is no longer spherically symmetric due to the presence of 1 by R 1 2 term that is therefore, it is necessary to use numerical methods to solve the time independent Schrodinger equation. If this R 1 2 term was not there I could have solved analytically like the hydrogen atom problem, but because of this presence of this term I cannot solve it analytically I need to go for numerical methods and the inter electron repulsion term which is going to bring out the complications in every quantum mechanical problem for atoms and molecules. So, if I cannot solve it then what I should do the easiest way is to neglect the 1 by R 1 2 term and that is what it leads to what is called an orbital approximation. If I neglect the 1 by R 1 2 term my helium atom Hamiltonian will become the linear combination of two hydrogen atom Hamiltonian. So, now H 1 can act on psi 1 and give an Eigen value E 1 H 2 can act on psi 2 to give an Eigen value E 2. So, my total helium atom energy will lead to the summation of two hydrogen atom like energy. So, when I can write the Hamiltonian as an additively separable quantity my wave function will be multiplicatively separable and this is what is called an orbital approximation where I can approximate the helium atom wave function as a product of two hydrogen atom wave function 1 s 1 and 1 s 2. Of course, you know that this form is not exactly correct because this actually violates Heisenberg uncertainty and that is why the concept of spin will come. 
But before going into that, let us see how the wave function will be different from molecules. And in this case, the way molecule is different from the technically from the atoms is that in case of atoms, there is only one nucleus. For molecules, there will be more than one nuclei. So, therefore, which you need additional approximation for to solve molecules. And that is what the molecule will happen. There are two heavy nucleus and electrons are shared by this nucleus which will lead to the concept of chemical bonding. Now, to solve molecule, the first thing we have to do is to use born oppenheimer approximation. In this born oppenheimer approximation, what you do is that you know the nucleuses are heavy, so they are slowly moving and the first electron can adjust very quickly. So, the way you can think is that nucleus are like elephants and these the electrons are like fly hovering over uh, these elephants. So, the position of the electrons get instantaneously adjusted with the motion of heavy nucleus. Mathematically, if you want to see what the born oppenheimer approximation exactly looks like, let us take a simple system, two electron, uh, two nuclei system, H2 molecule. So, where you have two hydrogen atom A and B, it does not matter which one is A and which one is B, it is a dummy variable and two electron 1 and 2. So, you can write the total Hamiltonian as a nuclear Hamiltonian plus an electronic Hamiltonian. So, in the case of electronic Hamiltonian, there is kinetic energy of electron 1, kinetic energy of electron 2, there is electron nuclear attraction of first electron with the hydrogen atom nucleus A, electron nuclear attraction of first electron with hydrogen atom nucleus B, same for the electron 2, there is electron electron repulsion term and nuclear nuclear repulsion term. Remember traditionally the nuclear nuclear repulsion term in the born oppenheimer approximation is constant and it is always added to the electronic Hamiltonian. So, what you do in the born oppenheimer approximation is that first you fix the nucleus and find the energy for the fixed nuclear geometry. That means, you fix the nuclear position, solve the born oppenheimer approximation for electronic Hamiltonian, you get the electronic energy and the energy value what you get, you now put in the nuclear Schrodinger equation which gives you the total energy of the system. Remember, this is for two nuclei and two electronic system. If I want to write it in a general term, this is how I can write it, where my i is the index of my electron and a is the index of my nucleus and n n is the number of nuclei, n e is the number of electron. So, this is kinetic energy of the electron, this is nuclear electron attraction, electron electron repulsion and this is what is the classical term nuclear nuclear repulsion term. And this gives us the concept of potential energy curve. So, in the potential energy curve, the nucleus is moving in the field of potential generated by electron. That is why it is called potential energy curve and if I would have taken a three dimensional, it would have been called a potential energy surface or PES. Now, to define the molecular Schrodinger equation in born oppenheimer approximation, what are the informations which are necessary? The first information of course necessary is number of electrons. Second thing I would need is charge and multiplicity because charge will tell me how many electrons I have. For example, H2 has 2 electron, but if I go to H2 plus my number of electron is 1. As well as I need the multiplicity, in, multiplicity information because we need to know which spin state we are solving. For example, water or oxygen with 8 electron has can be both singlet and triplet and ground state of oxygen is actually triplet. The second information I would I would need the third information actually is the number of nuclei because I have a summation over the number of nuclei and third thing I need to know this constant value R A B. So, I need to know this geometry. If I have this four information, I can write down the molecular Hamiltonian and I can solve it. Of course, I am not going to solve it by hand, we are going to solve it by computer. 